In this lesson, we'll cover some of the new optimizations in the Settings tab available in V-Ray Next for SketchUp. The Render Settings tab has been redesigned to have a more intuitive layout to speed up your workflow, while still offering you the same power and controls for advanced parameters as well. To demonstrate, let's start the interactive render and open the Asset Editor. If we expand the camera rollout in the Render Settings tab, you might notice that things look a bit different than in previous versions of V-Ray. In particular, across from the Exposure Valuation and White Balance parameters, you'll see a toggle button labeled Auto, as well as a compensation slider that is grayed out. We will discuss these new settings in detail in the next lesson. Right now, our image looks a bit overexposed. Let's drag the Exposure Value slider to the right, and you'll see that this gives us a brighter image. Dragging it to the left will result in a darker image, making it a handy option for adjusting the sensitivity of the camera. If we want more control over the exposure, we can expand the right-hand flyout menu where you'll see the advanced camera parameters are located. If we expand this dropdown, you'll see that we have preserved the physical camera exposure settings for extra precision, which you can also use to input values from a real camera. Now, if we take a closer look, you'll see that the relationship between the exposure value and the advanced camera parameters is correlated, so that changing one affects the other and vice versa. Okay, let's set the exposure value to 12 for the final image and then twirl up the advanced parameters and the camera rollout. Now that I've set the exposure, let's drop down the render output rollout. Right now, the aspect ratio is set to 1 to 1 square, which isn't a particularly flattering composition. I'd like to use something more flexible, so let's click the down arrow and switch to the custom aspect ratio option. In V-Ray Next, we can click on this new chain icon to unlock the image width and height so that you can input separate values for each. This allows us to experiment with the image size without needing to know the aspect ratio in advance. For this scene, I'm going to stick with 700 by 900, but you should feel free to experiment with it on your own. Now you've seen how you can use the optimized controls in the camera and render output settings to quickly and easily make tweaks to your exposure and perspective and create stunning looking images without any hassle.